Alright, hello everyone. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions on my guitar sound and how I go about getting my guitar sound. Uh, so I, th I thought I'd do a little tutorial for you guys. Um, by no means do I claim to, to have the way to make a guitar sound for metal. Um, but this is my techniques and how I go about doing it. And this is pretty all pretty standard stuff. So, so it's more aimed at the beginner. Um, that said, I uh, hope you learned something, and, um, the, this is the guitar's, uh, what we'll be, what we'll be going for in the end result, and I'll show you how to get there, so I'll just let you hear it a little bit. So, so, um, it's worth bearing in mind that I, uh, double-track my guitar, so I, record one, pan it all the way to the right, record another, pan it all the way to the left, so it gets this big, nice stereo separation. Uh, another thing that's worth noting is the fact that I do have a uh, couple plugins on my master bus, so uh, everything I have is freeware, so you anybody can go and get them. Um, so these are the settings if you really want to... Uh, to get exactly the kind of sound I'm going for, but um, so we'll just start off with the guitars. So I'll mute one of the channels and pan one of them to the right hand side, and um, I'll walk you through it. So the first thing I start off with is my amps. Um, Again, all my amps are freeware, so anybody can get them. I'll put a link to all of them in the description. Um, I am a huge fan of Ingle amps, so I use this simulation of a Fireball 100. And it is the best I've ever heard in terms of amp sims. It's awesome. Um, it's amazing that it's free, actually. Um so the first I don't I don't even worry about the amp until I have a cab sim along with it because it would it sounds like it sound that's how it would sound if you plugged your amp into a PA system just terrible so the cabinet simulator I use or loader I should say is a uh, Poulan Le Cab it's wonderful I love it. And um, and so I use Catharsis Friedman cabinet simulations. I just find they work the best for me. You can go with whatever you want. Um, so we'll, I usually just start off by comparing all of the cabinet simulators or impulses. Uh, just going through one of each one of them. Can't talk today. And uh, see what works best, because I tend to like the ones that have a little bit more top end on them, so I'll let you hear them. So I tend to go for uh, this one. The I think it's the third down in the menu. I don't know, but I find it if you if you use the other ones, the other ones are a little bit low end heavy and not enough top end, and it sounds like I don't know, like you put a quilt over the cabinet, and so it fades into the background of the mix really, really easily. Um, so yeah, that's the one I'm going with. So the next thing I usually do is uh, I usually add an overdrive pedal. I have three of them that I like, but this one I find is the best. Oops. If I can drag it. Whoop. 
put it before the amp, just like you would in a normal real-world setup. Um, and then I usually turn the drive to about a quarter of the way up. So I'll let you hear it for yourself. See, the reason why I, I turn it that far up is because if you t I find because of the amp being so overdriven to begin with, if you turn the drive up too far, it gets really woofy and flubby and over-distorted. And I know that probably sounds, uh, you know, for a, for a metal guy, you know, like you want it to be as heavy as it possibly can, but it just... It doesn't sound good to my ears if you have the drive on this pedal all the way up and the amp being so distorted. Um, and it boosts it a nice level, but it tightens things up. And that's the kind of sound I'm going for. So now we will begin with the amp. So I usually just start by default and just turn the gain all the way up. <laughs> I usually have the volume on everything, even the the uh, cabinet sim here all the way up because of the f so that I can just turn everything up and down with the fader and not have to worry about turning turning everything up individually. <laughs> so uh, the next thing I usually do is add some EQ onto it. So I'm using Studio One. Um, and it has a plug-in called the Fat Channel. And I really, really, really like this one because of the fact that it has a shelf on the EQ. And this is really good for everything. I use it on drums, vocals, guitar, obviously, and bass, uh, and uh, whatever else I'm recording. Um, it just adds a nice boost to it. So let's see here. Right about there. See, one tip I would give to anybody recording is is don't boost or cut anything too fast, because if you boost or cut things too fast, your ears won't have time to adjust. Um. And so you won't have it. It'll it'll be hard to to hear everything properly and really dial in things because at this point we're really just sort of it's a game of millimeters at this point. Um, and th the thing I usually do most is cut frequencies rather than boost them. Um, so with the gu with guitars, I usually cut about fifty hertz. Oh, just to get some of that extreme bottom end and to leave some room for bass and kick drum and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, and then we'll... I find with this amp simulator that the EQ sounds best at noon on all the levels. I don't know why, but, you know, I'll go through one of the knob or each one of the knobs and let you hear the difference. See, like, if you turn it down, it sounds like a radio, and you turn it too high, and it's way too much. Uh, and, and, I mean, that's that's the case with every amp or amp simulator. But yeah, it just... See what I mean? It just sounds best in at noon, at least to my ears. Um, and as with every amp sim, I find the input control to be useless. I mean, I can't hear that much of a difference. The only time I can hear a difference 
is when you get down to here. But other than that, I mean, it's it just sounds like it does. Like I'll show you. I don't find it makes that much of a difference, so so we'll just leave it where it is, and that's it for the amp. And then the next thing I usually do is add a, a compressor to the end of it, just to round out the palm mutes and keep everything in check. And again, this is a free compressor, which I will put in the description. And so the reason why I like this compressor is is the soft knee control and the release control. If you play with those, you can get this incredibly smooth sound to it. Um, and I just love it. So I uh, will demonstrate for you. I find it's a little bit of a bummer that uh, the ratio controls are just kind of presets. I would have liked to have a variable control, but oh well, it it works. And I use this on absolutely everything. It's it's great. So as and if you notice, I there is a stereo version and a mono version. I'm using the mono version because we are panning the guitars hard left and hard right so we don't need it to be in stereo. Um, what else? After that it's basically just uh, getting the volumes right with the mix and that's basically it. I mean it's it's nothing world shaking or, or uh, super duper complicated but it sounds good and and uh, works really nicely in a mix too. So I'll, I'll let you hear it in a mix. I'll just drag all these over. Oops. Move that back. One thing to to note as well with this um, this uh, Ingle cab or a uh, cabinet, not cabinet. Uh, this amp simulator is that it's very performance heavy. So I don't know your computer settings, but for me, if you have too many of these in your in your mix, your computer will sl slow down to a crawl. So I only double track my stuff for that reason. I would like to quad track, but I don't have the computer for it. So uh, bear that in mind. So that this these are the guitars that we just made. So there you go. It um it works great in a mix and sounds lovely. So I hope you got I hope you learned something from this and and uh, I hope it helps you in your own recording endeavors. And uh, I'll let you hear them isolated for a bit, and then I'll let you hear it in the, in the full mix. So, bye-bye uh, for now.